Welcome to WVU Football Going Deep. My goal is to take a closer look at some of the stories, not just what happened, but why, how, maybe what it means for the future of the program. Sometimes I may even be right. Please subscribe, like, comment, all of those marvelous things that help us out. And now, on to the good stuff. There were times in 2022 when the defense actually played well. People don't tend to remember that because there were also plenty of times when the defense sucked rocks. Just as it looked like we were going to get a stop, somebody blows a coverage, and we're down seven points. Well, just how did the defense end up that bad? And what's being done about it? And what does 2023 look like? How we got this bad actually goes back to 2019. At that point when Neil Brown came in, he put a recruiting focus on the offensive line, the defensive line, and the defensive backfield. If you look at the offensive line and the defensive line right now, it worked. They've got talent, experience, and depth. And yet the defensive backfield has talent. <laughs> They're getting experience now. They're getting depth. But the issues with the transfer portal hit the defensive backfield harder than any other position on the team. Now, partly that was because the original recruits were ones that were recruited by Dana Holgerson, and they didn't necessarily fit well with the culture. And in 2020, they were recruiting players that they hadn't spent much time with. There were a lot of misses. They finally reached the point where they're recruiting better, recruiting smarter. They've got more NIL money, though I don't particularly like talking about that too much. And so they are retaining players. Last year before the season, they were very happy with the players they had. They were talking about an aggressive defense, playing more man coverage, bringing a lot of pressure, and it didn't happen. What did happen was Charles Woods got injured. Now, you should never be in a spot where losing one player causes that much of a breakdown. But Charles Woods was the only experienced player in the entire defensive backfield. Now, they had talent. They had guys that were going to be able to work their way into a lot of good playing time. But originally it depended on having Woods' side of the field covered. Then you could roll a little help to the other side. You could bring pressure. And even if Woods wasn't calling the signals, which he wasn't, he was a stabilizing influence. He could help confirm signals or correct signals. So when Woods went down, communication also faltered. You had a lot of guys who just didn't understand the system well enough and weren't quite ready to play at the level they were being asked to. And then, <laughs> more injuries. Mallinger went down. Others were out for periods of time. Players were getting moved around to their secondary positions. So it was a mess. There's no two ways about it. It was a mess. Now, of late, the coaches have also been talking about the problems with the complexity of the program, of the defensive schemes. 
offense has been getting more and more complicated. Well, that's not quite true. Offenses have been working at looking more and more complicated. You're getting a lot of shifts, a lot of motion. Some of it designed to get the defense to reveal what they're planning to do. And a lot of it nothing but smoke and mirrors, sound and fury signifying nothing. But defenses were trying to compensate. They wanted to be able to shift for whatever shifts the offense made. Now when you get into that, it's like if, if they do this, we do this. If they do that, we do this. And you have way too many options to remember. They're changing too fast with the offense moving around. And you get blown calls, especially when you've got younger players. Or you've got Marcus Floyd playing at safety when he had always played a quarter, you know, cornerback. And let's not get down on Floyd. Yeah, he didn't do a great job in the beginning of the season, but it's not because of ability. It's because he was moving into a Power 5 you know, conference, and it's because he had not played safety before. But he was responsible for a lot. If he wasn't up to it quite yet, well, that's the nature of things. He wasn't supposed to have to take on quite that much responsibility that quickly. Now, what's the good news? Because there is good news. As I mentioned, there's a lot of talent. There, well, having gotten thrown to the wolves last year, there's now experience. We've also moved a few players out of the program who weren't really moving up. Uh, at least one by graduation and a couple who recently hit the portal because they were still stuck around third on the depth chart and not making any progress after a year with new guys coming in and moving ahead of them. Well, that's good news. You, get, you have to get rid of some guys that were misses. If they're not going to be able to work their way up, let them move on where they can play. Bring in somebody else. Now some of those guys, like Cobb, uh, a number of others, look to be hard hitters, tight coverage, aggressive players. And aggressive has not been the name of this defense for several years. So if that comes through, that's going to help a lot. Coaches have also simplified the defense. Now, when they talk about going back to fundamentals, yes, that partly means things like tackling, but it also means the fundamentals of defense. Just do your job. Know your job. Don't worry about those guys on the other side of the line running around. Yes, you pay attention to where they're going, but know your job, do your job, and let them wear themselves out running back and forth. Just be in position when the play starts. If you watch the spring game, well, actually, go backwards a bit in time. If you watch the last four games of the 2022 season, you should have noticed that it was a different defense. They were already trying to simplify things, Plus, they had people back at their best positions. They had some people back not so banged up. Yes, there were still mistakes, but they were flying to the ball. They were making the tackles. Tackles for loss, I think they pretty much was either a 50% increase or a 100% increase, but it was significant. It was a lot more fun to watch, even in the rain. Now this year, with the additional players, you look at the spring game, not only were they flying to the ball, but when a tackle was made, it wasn't usually just one guy. 
if there weren't two or three guys in on the tackle, there were at least two, three, four, five guys in the area. It was good old gang tackling, and it was hard nose fun football. In many ways, it reminds me a lot more of an old Jeff Castile defense when they were experienced. Because if you go look back, when Jeff Castile, and he was a master, when he had inexperienced players, his defenses played it safe made mistakes, and gave up points. And that probably sounds a little bit familiar from more recent history. But when those players gained experience, ah, it was a marvel to watch, unless you were an opposing offense, and then it was torment. And I think a lot of offenses are going to be surprised and tormented by the West Virginia defense in 2023. I may be wrong, but hey, it's possible sometimes I'm right. Now remember, please, subscribe, comment, like, all of those things that help us out here on the internet. And I'll see you again with some more observations and hopefully some more good stuff. This is WVU Football going deep.